Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Lee Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, so uh, moving on with um, more wines that I, you know, recording or reviewing. Uh, this next wine uh, I bought at Som Select for $27.89. At least my notes say that, so that probably included the, the little bit of shipping that you have to do, including insurance and then taxes and all that. It was probably like a $25 bottle of wine uh, on the original offer. So this is the 2016 uh, Paul Jabolet uh, Ain or Aine, Saint Pere Les. Let's see if I without all the, the fancy script. Les Sauvages, Sauvageres. Okay, so Les Sauvageres uh, or Cher, Z, whatever is the local nickname for a wine called Marsan. So this is actually from the Northern Rhone. Um, the uh, Saint Pere uh, region is this tiny region uh, in the southern part of the northern Rhone next to an area called Cornas. That should have been my cue to put a little map up uh, of that. And um, this producer, uh, uh, Paul Jaboulet, um, Jaboulet uh, is like iconic. So um, this dude, back in the, let's see here, 18, when was it? Uh, back in the 18, mid 18, uh, 1800s, like 1834, full hundred years before the introduction of the AOC system, Antoine, uh, it's not Paul, but Antoine Jevelet began to transform a sleepy region into one of the most important quality wine growing terroirs in the world. Since that time, Paul Javelet, named after Antoine's oldest son, um, has become the benchmark in the Northern Rhone uh, with the iconic Hermitage La Chapelle being responsible for some of the greatest wines ever produced. Uh, so anyway, uh, 2005, they sold the estate to uh, Jean-Jacques Frey and family, uh, and they have done a tremendous job with the transition. His daughter, uh, Caroline oversees production today and has been a steadfast driver for sustainability certified within her first year is now pushing heavily for biodynamic conversion. Um, the, this wine is sourced from various vineyards around Saint Pere with a third of the fruit coming from estate owned vineyards. All vines are over 30 years old. Um, they are in pure limestone soils. They handpick the crop, uh, shuttle to the winery in the quaint town of Tain Lemertage at the base of the Grand Hill. So that's like the, the best of the best of the best in the Northern Rhone. Um, I don't know why I put air quotes in there because it literally is the best of the best of the best. Sorry, the camera's over there. Um, let's see here. Uh, they undergo a cool temperature controlled fermentation. Both malolactic and stirring of leaves are avoided in order to retain the wine's precision and freshness. Aging process uh, is unique. They use three vessels. A quarter of the wine is transferred into small concrete eggs. 20% are stainless steel. The remaining 55 is put into French oak, which only 5% is new. Uh, and it's a 100% Marsan, which um, is unusual. We don't normally see uh, Marsan and or Roussan. They're usually like, you know, blending, blending uh, brothers and sisters, or whatever, B blending siblings. Uh, it's rare to see them a single variety on their own. However, in Texas, I've been seeing uh, both, I've seen a lot of Roussan uh, in Texas. It's doing really well on its own. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, that's about everything to tell you about the wine. All right. And I still haven't had the Corbin do any leaking. So whatever, whatever you guys, you know, this this newer unit, 
Uh, the replacement unit has been working flawlessly. I love it. Let's see, was there anything else on here that I needed to talk about? Oh, uh, the boundaries of saint Pre make it seem larger than it actually is. There are less than 200 acres of vines planted on hillsides all of which are Marsan or Roussan. So that AOC is, there's a Marsan or Roussan AOC. It's a white wine AOC, whereas Cornas is a red wine, Syrah only. It's, yeah, just Syrah, uh, and they're like neighbors. Um, let's see here. And both those grapes are used in white Hermitage. So red Hermitage is Syrah, but you can also have white Hermitage. And I think the red Hermitage can have these, the white grapes in there too, but like very small percentages along with Viognier, I'm almost positive on the Viognier. Um, let's see here. Uh, I think that's it. All right. Ooh, wow. Very, um, very nectarine-like, peachy. It's a somewhat sweetness to the to the aroma. Kind of candied orange. Um, some white flowers. It kind of reminds me of the empathy wine, but like taking up another notch or two. Yeah, and um Somewhat honeyed, maybe ginger-like. Highly doubt there's botrytis in this, but there could be. All right, let's try it. There's definitely um, somewhat of a, of a bitterness, not in a bad way, but kind of like the bitterness of biting into like the peach, like the, like the peach skin, the, almost a fuzziness and like the, that type of bitterness. Um, the, the, the fruit comes off less sweet uh, on the palate, not quite tart, but less sweet than it does on the nose. So the nose is somewhat riper, sweeter on the palate comes off a little more tart or a little um, little um, under ripe or not as ripe. Um, very flavorful wine. This wine is outstanding. So if you find this wine, besides that the producer is obviously really good, if you find this wine somewhere, you should get it. I don't know how rare this wine actually is, um, but at $28, $29, it's definitely not cheap. Um, it's not expensive but it's a lot of money to, to, to pay for a wine that's from a very small area but that's probably why it's also not $15 because it's not a high production wine. I don't, I don't think they told us how, uh, how much is made of this in particular but since there's only 200 acres of these grapes planted and this is only one of those grapes you can imagine it's really not a high, um, a high production wine. Hmm. Had a little bug. He did. He gone. So it almost looks like a flying ant of some sort. Anyway, um, really tasty wine. If you find it, you should get it especially if you, you know, can do that. It says uh, drinking window now till 2023. So, you know, something that you can lay down for a little bit. I imagine it'll probably taste even better. Probably a little bit richer. Um, really nice. All right. Um, and uh, obviously on, not obviously because you don't know, but looking at this over here, uh, the Osmo Pocket sitting at 73% on the battery and I've only done two episodes. So, not sure if uh, it's a long-term viable for long-term like episodes that may last two hours and I have to do two of them in one day or something like that. So that's starting to make me think that I need to revert to the phone 
and just use the phone from now on or just bring the Vixia because I just I just think the Vixia is does just fine. But anyway, so um, that's going to do it for this episode. Click the links above to frame me up. Click links below to learn more about the wines. You hit the donate button if you want to help me with my, uh, whatchamacallit, trip to Oregon. And uh, subscribe to the show on iTunes or, or YouTube or whatever. And uh, we'll see everyone again next time.